when I look at Lewis still in his 40s and see what he's accomplished, there are so many distinguished scientists. They would envy Lewis for what Lewis has already done when they compare their lifetime achievements to his. I think you would go to any of hundreds of labs worldwide and they would know, 100% know who Lewis K was, would be running his pulse sequences, would be using his approaches on their own spectrometers. I mean, I'm sure I'm biased, but I think he has, he has really come to, to dominate um, the protein NMR technological field. The determining year in his life in terms of getting interested in academic things was probably when he was in grade three. That year, uh, we as a family went to Israel. Lewis, of course, was thrown into the uh, Israeli school system, which was totally in Hebrew. He had to develop study habits and catch up, and at the end of that year, he was at the top of his class. You know, he excelled every year in, in school, and most certainly in high school, he walked away with the, the top award for the Edmonton Public School System. The advantage that I had was that uh, I didn't know anything else, so I thought it was quite natural that everybody would want to be a scientist, right? Because uh, that was really the, the subject material that permeated the dinner table. I remember walking home from high school every day and wondering how I could possibly become a mathematician and still do something useful. <laughs> and graduating from the Faculty of Science, he got the Lieutenant Governor's gold medal for the highest marks in the whole Faculty of Science. I'm going to take anything from the University of Alberta. I, I think it's the, the spirit that you can be an outstanding researcher, a first-rate professor, and a first-rate human being. And that sort of insight into the multidimensionality of a, of a, of a scholar, uh, researcher, teacher is, is, is something that, that was particularly, I thought, uh, well done at the University of Alberta. Here he comes to the University of Toronto as a, at the entry level as an assistant professor and in three years was promoted to the rank of full professor. I mean, that's a meteoric rise at any university. So why don't we just do the diamagnetic stuff? How do we see something that's too small to be seen? We use this tool called magnetic resonance spectroscopy where we perturb the molecule atom by atom and define its structure and define its dynamics and define the way it interacts with other proteins and then essentially uh, unravel the mechanism by which this protein works. But I wanted to go even bigger yet. I wanted to look at supramolecular systems. So these would be uh, large machines. Our body is made up of cells. The cells have machines in them, literally molecular machines, motors, that carry out absolutely critical biological functions. When these machines uh, are in a disrepair or are destroyed or are mutated, it leads to um, diseases, cancer, for example. And ultimately, for someone like me, who is a physician, these are very important discoveries in terms of, of human health and human illness. It certainly is useful and it gets back to those days when I was coming home uh, from high school wondering how I was going to combine math with cancer research. It reminds me of that old adage of if we see farther it's because we stand on the shoulders of giants and in effect you see that in a father and son. They, father a giant and the son just going full speed ahead in his father's field. It's quite wonderful. He has suggested to me that uh, if I ever get bored uh, that he'd quite uh, that he'd be prepared to uh, take me on as a postdoctoral fellow in his lab but of course unsalaried and uh, believe me it's uh, uh, it's something that I'm looking forward to in my next career. You're tempted by that. <laughs> I'm tempted, because I could learn a hell of a lot. <laughs>